Thank you so much indeed, Anna, for ministering to us tonight. That final peace brings us to the mercy tree tonight. What a peace, what a message. When it's centered on the center tree at Calvary. Let's burn a wee word of prayer together, please. And let's remember the Lord is here. And let's really seek him just now. Lord, we thank thee for what our ears have heard already. We just pray now, Lord, as we turn to the sacred page, we would hear thy voice. For those tonight who are still strangers to grace, strangers to God, Lord, tonight, this would be the night. This will be the moment when they will seek thee and be found of thee. And I am trusting thee for power, for, Lord, thy power it cannot fail, and the word that thou hast given me shall and must prevail. O God, give this prevailing word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles tonight to the prophecy of Isaiah, and we're in chapter 66 tonight. The prophecy of Isaiah... And we're in chapter 66 this evening. Down through the ages, down through the generations, mankind developed a very dangerous attitude and developed a very dangerous approach as far as God is concerned. Down through the generations, down through the years, man turned his face against God. And as man turns his face against God tonight, man thinks he's hard against God. Many have tried it, only to find to fail. Do you remember in the Old Testament book of Exodus? In the Old Testament book of Exodus, you've got Pharaoh. What did Pharaoh say? Pharaoh say, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? Pharaoh failed against God, didn't he? Job chapter 9 verse 4 say, who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered? No matter how man hardens himself against God, man will never prosper. In fact, in the book of Isaiah 45 and 9, this is what we read, Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. And another dangerous attitude and approach that man has adopted to down through the generations and the years. Man thinks that nothing to mock God. The Bible tells us in Galatians 6 and 7 tonight, Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. John Lennon stood up one day and said that the Beatles were far more powerful and more important than the Lord Jesus Christ. He called him Jesus Christ. He had the manners to call him Lord. But the same man who said that the Beatles were more important than Jesus Christ fell 
to six bullets of a gunman's gun. God is not mocked, friends. And it's an awful thing to meet if you think and believe you can play hard man against God. A one-time man who stood for presidents of Brazil, the presidency of Brazil, said, if I get 500,000 500, votes for the presidency, even God himself will not be able to remove me. He got the 500,000 votes, but the night before he was to take his presidency, he took ill and he died and he never saw it. God is not mocked, friend. Marilyn Monroe, who went to hear Billy Graham preach, said to Billy Graham, I don't need your Jesus. One week later, Marilyn Monroe was dead. Why is it tonight? How is it tonight? Man is so careless. Careless about their soul. I wonder are you careless about your soul tonight, love? What about you, sir? You careless about your soul tonight? Are you careless enough to harden yourself against the Almighty? Because one thing man will find, man is not harder than God, but God is harder than man. Do you remember Saul of Tarsus in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9? Going down the Damascus road, breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the church of God. What happened? I'll tell you, friend, what happened. God put him on the dust of the Damascus road. And we read, there he was trembling. I tell you, friend, God can make a hard man tremble. Remember in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, the Philippian jailer, and I'll tell you, he had a heart as cold as stone. No time for God. No time for Christ. No time for the servants of God. No time whatsoever. I'll tell you, friend, at two minutes to midnight, that man whose heart was as cold as stone and as hard as stone came in, and it says he came trembling. I'll tell you, God can make hard men tremble. He made Saul of Tarsus tremble on the Damascus road. He made the Philippian jailer, he made the Philippian jailer tremble in the Philippian jail. He made Felix tremble upon the throne. God makes men tremble, friend. The problem is today, man forgets who God really is. I wonder tonight, have you forgot who God really is tonight? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now let's take a wee look at Isaiah chapter 66, please. In verse number one, my text is verse two, but listen to what verse one says. Verse one says, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. Now here's my text. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Now, that's my text tonight. Let me repeat it. 
But to this man, God says, will I look. Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. I want you to notice three things in that text tonight. Here's the first one. In that text tonight, there's a man considered. But to this man will I look tonight. God points his finger to a certain man this evening. Do you know, friend, one of mankind's greatest problems? Mankind's greatest problem is a sin. But mankind's greatest problem and one of his greatest problems is religious pride, didn't it? Religious pride tonight has shut out more people out of heaven. Religious pride tonight has prevented more people from coming to Christ. Religious pride tonight not drink. Religious pride. Not drugs. Religious pride, I'm telling you. Religious pride has damned more souls in hell than anything, friends. Do you know religious pride tonight is one of the great great blindfolds of the devil. Man, I'm telling you, it's the greatest weapon the devil has in keeping people from getting saved. Religious pride. Do you know what religious pride does? It stops man from seeing what he needs to see. What does man need to see? Today? Man needs to see that he's a sinner. If you're not saved, today, you need to see today, that you're a sinner. Man needs to see his sin. Man might not want to see his sin. Ah, but man needs to see his sin. You need to see your sin, love. A man or a woman who never sees their sin is a man and a woman who will never be saved. Because unless a man or a woman sees their need, they'll never have that need met. It's because a man or a woman sees their need and knows their need and acknowledges their need. It's what drives them to Christ. It's what drove me to Christ tonight. You see, friend, this evening there's this man tonight that is considered. But to this man tonight. Now listen, friends, this evening. Do you see your need? Do you see your sin tonight? The Bible says we all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And that's from the Bible, friends, tonight. This is God's Word. God's Word says tonight the wages of sin is death. The Word of God says tonight if ye were to die in your sins, even Christ himself said, where I am, there ye cannot come. The Word of God says this evening, friends, the Word of God says tonight, sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Listen, friends, this evening tonight. Listen to me. We need to own up that we're sinners this evening. But religious pride won't let you see that. Oh, I'm not a sinner. I don't know how many times I've been told that. But my friend, this evening you're a sinner tonight. I'll tell you what religious pride does. It not only blames you from your sin, it blames you from the Savior tonight. The most blinded people throughout the four Gospels, friend, wasn't the harlots or the publicans and the sinners. The most blinded people throughout the four Gospels was the religious leaders, the chief priests and the elders. 
When one's blinded tonight by religious pride, I'll tell you they'll never see their need of the Savior. One will never see that Christ died for them. Unsaved friend tonight, can I urge you, can I plead with you this evening, believe me tonight, Christ died for you. The Savior went to the cross for you. The Savior was crucified for you. The Savior hung there for you. The Savior suffered there for you. He bled there for you. He died there for you. You know, friend, that's one of the great, awful, horrible sins tonight of religious pride. It ignores Christ. And religious pride tonight turns man's back on the one who loved them and gave himself for them. That's what religious pride does, is he? Ah, but this man that is considered tonight, who is he? He's the person that knows their need. Does God love everyone? Of course he loves everyone. Does God will for every man to be saved? Of course he wills for every man to be saved tonight. My goodness, look at the man, the thief on the cross. Did not the Lord Jesus consider him? Did he not consider Bartimaeus? Did he not consider, friend, the man of Gadara? Listen, Christ never ignored any person that knew they needed him. The man that is considered. I want you to notice something else in that text tonight, more important. The man that is contrite. But to this man will I look. Even to him that is poor. And of a contrite spirit. Who is the man tonight that's contrite? I'll tell you who he is. He's a man tonight who's broken over his sin. Do you know who a person is contrite tonight? A person whose heart is broken because of their sin this evening. I'll tell you this. Do you know what scares me tonight? There's very few conversions tonight of people who have been broken by sin. And you may say to me, well, George, I've done nothing for my heart to be broken over. I'll tell you what you've done. You've turned your back on Christ all these years. That should break your heart. And one of the great things that scares me tonight is this. There's a lot of people, and I believe they're only holding on to a false profession. There was nothing there to start with. I had a gospel mission in the Lifeboat Mission in January 2011, and this woman, I preached that night on the text of the woman by the well. And my text that night was an unusual one. It was where the Lord Jesus says, Thou hast answered well. For thou had not one, the man that thou is now is nothing husband, for thou had five husbands. And the thrust of the message was that night, listen, Christ can see through you. Christ can see through you to me. After that meeting was over, it was open the night of the mission, this woman came out to me, man, she had her head covered, she had her head covered. Lovely suit. Bible in her hand, handbag and all the much, floods of tears, floods of tears, crying she was. And I brought her into the wee council room. She looked apart. And I spoke to her and I counseled her and I let her do all the talking. When I'm counseling people, I let them do all the talking. She says, God has found me out tonight. He says, what do you mean? 
She says, I've been playing the Christian for all these years. I was never saved. And God has saw through me tonight who I really am. And God has showed that to me. And I'm telling you tonight, friends, it scares me that people who are hanging on tonight by a false profession, there was nothing ever there. There's been never any brokenness of sin. There never has been repentance of sin. The person tonight who's poor Contrite means broken into dust. If your sin ever breaks you tonight, you can have everything in this world, but tonight if you're here without Christ, you have nothing. We need to realize today we're not only paupers in the sight of Almighty God, This man will I consider. Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. Many men do horrible things and it comes back to haunt them. The most horrible thing a man or a woman can ever do, and I'll tell you it's this, is turning your back on Christ who died for you. But to this man will I consider. Bertie Johnson, Pastor Bertie Johnson, who's a personal friend of mine, I've missioned for him and I've missioned with him was a hard, hard, hard drinker. In fact, he drunk his father out of a farm alone. Him and Pat went to the wee Methodist church in Bundoran one evening. She was a Roman Catholic. And the deal was, well, Bertie, you come to my church, I'll go to your church. And Bertie had no church. I went to this wee Methodist church in Bundoran. It's not there now. Bertie heard a man preach. And after Bertie dropped Pat home, God spoke to Bertie, and God saw the person who he was. All he could see was a sin. Broken he was. All he could see was the Father's land. But what he saw most of all, that every sin was against Christ. That night he said in the hay she had to think it was. I got down on my knees, broken, he said. But that's the way God wanted me to come. That's the way all must come to me. Broken under the burden of sin. But you'll find this tonight. There's a Savior who's willing to take that burden away. And to make you whole. But I want you to notice the man that is convicted in that text and trembleth at my word. Rachel and Glenn and a number of us on Wednesday night went to hear a man called Nicky Cruz. Who was Nicky Cruz? Who is he? I'll tell you who he is. He was once one of the most wickedest gang leaders in New York City. was one of the most feared gang leaders in New York City. David Wilkinson was the late David Wilkinson. Now, he was preaching one day and he, he said these words, Nicky Cruz, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. 
Do you know what those three words did to Nicky Cruz, the most wicked gang leader in New York City? Those three words broke his heart. Nicky Cruz says, I have the power to cut you into a thousand pieces. He says, go ahead. David Wilkerson says, go ahead. And the more pieces you cut me into, he says, every piece will tell you the same message. Jesus loves you. That night, or a little later on, it was the, him and his gang went to the meeting of David Wilkerson. The same message. And not only Nicky Cruz, but the whole gang was wonderfully and gloriously saved and stood trembling under the power of the gospel. Tell me this tonight. Do you realize Jesus loves you? Do you realize those nails were for you? Do you realize the crown of thorns was for you? Do you realize the cross was for you? All for you, friends. Christ died because he loves you. And friend, this evening, but to this man will I look even to him that is a poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. O oh, sinner, friend, have you not known that Jesus died for thee? The Lamb of God has paid the price on the cross of Calvary. Here's how I came and I finished. I want to use two verses of a hymn to tell my testimony tonight, and here it is. By God's word at last my sin I learn. Then I trembled at the law I had spurned till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. That's how it was for me. I trembled under the two words of John 14 and 6, No man cometh to the Father but by me. No man, no man, no man. Then I want to use this final verse, because this is how I came. Near the cross, a trembling soul. Love and mercy found me till the bright and morning star shed its beams around me. Oh, friend, tonight, may under the power of God's word you be broken. Because Christ seeks you tonight. I'm going to finish with verse number four. I want everybody to watch verse four. Because this speaks tonight of those who reject the Savior. Verse number four, those who ignore him. He says this, I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I call none the dancer, when I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. Do you want to see yourself in verse 2 tonight? If you do, you'll be in heaven. Or do you want to see yourself in verse 4 tonight? Be lost forever. Come tonight. God loves you. Christ died for you. Let's burn bread.